I'm, the, I'm currently the executive director of the Acceleration Studies Foundation. And what we've been doing is, you know, just asking people about their predictions about the future and, you know, whatever you know, capacity they feel um, comfortable enough to answer that question in. So what do you think the future has, has in store? That's a big question. Uh, it's, it, it's exciting and scary all at the same time. Um, there, there's the short-term view and then there's the long-term. I, I think in the short-term, uh, the capacity for uh, human organization and communication is really where we're going to see the acceleration in technological growth, um, specifically in terms of the adaptation of those technologies. Um, there's currently a great deal of work being done um, in different aspects of technology, whether it be biotechnology, nanotechnology, artificial intelligence. Um, and while there will always be movement in that area, um, I think at a certain point, the ability or the motivation of people to adapt those technologies into their regular lives or into the business world um, will limit that growth. Whereas um, the communication between people and how they communicate and the ways in which they communicate, that um, is really where we're going to see the most growth within the next five to ten years. Um, and certainly beyond that, uh, the sky's the limit in terms of the, uh, the other technologies that are being discussed specifically here at this conference. Do you buy into the whole idea of the singularity? It, uh, that's, that's a difficult question. Intellectually, I absolutely buy into it. Emotionally, humanistically, I absolutely do not. And I think it, that may be more of a matter of resistance and fear than it is necessarily uh, the what's ap what, what's actually realistically going to happen. Um, I, I always ask this question of people and I, I and I like to get and I get different answers all the time that is um, if we can do something does that necessarily mean we should do something um, and I don't personally know that even if we can create machines that are quote-unquote smarter than humans whatever that means um, or can create other machines and constantly evolve itself um, in terms of its capacities, whether we should. Um, there's, an, there's a lot of different kinds of intelligence. Um, we already have machines that are in many ways more intelligent than humans. Um, I can do math in my head. I teach math. I'm very good at math. I can't do it as fast as a calculator, nor, uh, nor will I ever be able to. Um, uh, but at the same time, a computer or machine is never going to stroke somebody's head and make them feel better or connect with them in uh, very one-on-one -on -one personable ways. Um, and even if you look at the modern forms of communication, um, communication through an electronic medium, even if it's a, a video conference where you can see you face-to-face, you get more interaction in that way, but you still, there's something about being next to a person and talking to a person. Um, so do I believe that the singularity is possible or that it's near? I think in many ways we are already seeing forms of the singularity. Do I think that the singularity will ever occur on a macrocosmic basic, ba basis in terms of hum humans' interaction and relationship with machines? No, I don't think it's possible. I, I, I think there's something integral and innate in a person's humanity um, that will never, uh, never allow that point to actually occur. And it's difficult to communicate that to people, especially to people who are fans of technology for technology's sake. Um, there's a disconnect in terms of the understanding of, of, of that point of the singularity. Um, so I hope that was clear. Yeah. Okay. That said, are there still things that we sort of work, need to worry about as far as advancements? Oh, I think yeah. there's lots of things that we need to worry about. The, the example I give, and of course there's always counterexamples, but the example I give um, is in regard to the splitting of the atom. And even the, even the scientists who knew, who, who, who were doing the work, knew and said that this was a really bad idea that we wouldn't, this isn't necessarily something that we're going to be pleased that we did in the end. Now, of course, you know, in the 1970s, uh, perhaps everything was bad about it. Nuclear energy was bad, nuclear proliferation was bad, nuclear waste was bad. 
as we've begun to tame the technology, nuclear power has become more palatable. Um, you know, we have ideas of how to get rid of the waste um, and not necessarily poison the earth. Um, so over time, any technology can be tamed. The issue is, is, is humanity really ready to deal with certain technologies? Um, you give any child any toy, um, and the potential is always there for that child to use that toy uh, in a destructive means. Um, while I don't necessarily believe that we should restrict the advancement of technology, I, I think that it's the responsibility of any technologist, any person developing technology, to ask themselves why they're doing it and what the good will be that comes from it and to be very aware and very sensitive to the bad that could uh, potentially come out of it. Um, and specifically the bad to um, the environment, to other humans around them, um, to other living things. Do you think that self-control is enough to keep us safe? Because, I mean, you said yourself, you know, the scientists developing the atomic bomb said this is a bad idea. Right. I, I, I would like to think that as well as accelerating change in technology that we're accelerating change in our responsibility and our, our ethical, I, I choose not to use the word moral uh, uh, purposefully, our ethical um, bases. Um, sadly, I don't think that's necessarily the case. Um, I, I, there, there's no way that a body can control the growth of technology. Um, if we don't do it, they'll do it. If they don't do it, the other person will do it. Eventually, ideas spring up, and it's, it's, it's the old idea that it, it doesn't just spring up in one place. So um, I, I don't know that it's possible to, quote unquote, control the proliferation of technology. Um, I would like to think that, as a species, that w we can have the self-control to control that. Um, although I, my, I believe, I, I'm sad to say that my view it tends to run towards the more pessimistic. I don't necessarily believe we're on the path to meet the divine. Um, I think we're more, we have a lot more free will than that, and we have the capability to destroy everything in a moment's notice. Um, but by the same token, we have the same capacity to, to uh, bring about a great uh, benefit to every living thing. Um, it's all a matter of what we choose to do with it. Best case scenario, where do you see us 20, 30 years from now? Best case scenario, um, I, 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 I see um, the virtual end to hunger. Um, poverty is a relative thing. Um, it's difficult to know um, exactly where that will be. Um, uh, I, I see technologies that allow humans to communicate to one another on a much more immediate basis. Um, the sharing of ideas um, on, uh, on an almost instantaneous basis. Um, and along with that, then, of course, um, will come all of the other changes that go with that. Um, the advancement of, of, of technologies, the advancement of medicine, the increase in the lifespan. Um, uh, if you were to ask me what my hopeful best case scenario is, is that we actually are able to, to to understand our role on the earth as part of it, and that we use our technological know-how and intelligence to uh, to help heal the earth and to actually become a mem members of um, the earth uh, environmental uh, world, uh, for lack of a better term, um, that we become good neighbors to the other living things on this planet. In the best case scenario. Uh, I knew you were going to ask me that. The worst case scenario, um, people downloading their brains into machines, um, uh, people allowing technology to run rampant, um, uh, corporations continuing to have the power of individuals, and um, continuing the gap between the haves and have-nots, um, not using the technology um, to better the human condition and to make sure that uh, people are fed and taken care of, but to use that technology to, uh, for their own selfish means and their own selfish ends. Um, th that we haven't quite learned that money is a concept and uh, that we propagate the idea that to have more m 
means that you're better. Um, that's the worst case scenario. And in that end, ultimately, a uh, great cataclysm of, of in, in, in a number of different possible means. Which way do you think we're headed? Uh, I, 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 again, it's a different, it's a, it's a, it's a brain heart split. Um, in my brain, my observations, um, I see that we're probably headed towards the, the latter. Um, although, uh, there are people I talk to and there are communities that I know of and that are forming that if they can grab a foothold and really, um, spread, spread the word, um, that we may be able to bring about a change. Um, it's all about the next generation, and the next one after that, and the next one after that. What haven't we talked about that's important? What haven't we talked about that's important? I think we've covered. I think we've covered everything. The uh, uh, just. I, I think if I were to leave leave you with one thing, it would be the understanding of of technology as as a tool. Uh, that we can use um, for good or for ill, um, and uh, to understand that anything anything in the extreme is bad. Aristotle's uh, idea of moderation is the key. Um, that's true not only in the way that you live your life, but also in the way that you develop technology and uh, utilize that technology. Cool. Thank you.